Our ability to reverse the science of skin aging is advancing rapidly, and some of the most exciting developments have come in laser-based technologies. But with so many different types out there, it can be quite confusing to wade through the options to find the approach that's best for you. So in this video, I'll break down the basic types of therapies available, the pros and cons of each, and the specific types of skin aging that they target best. Plus, we'll look at an emerging technology that's so effective that it's transforming how dermatologists approach skin rejuvenation. And if you want weekly health free research summaries and health strategies that I share with my patients, sign up in the link in the pinned comment. So how does laser skin rejuvenation work? Well, it begins with damaging our skin, and that sounds like the exact opposite of what we want to do, but it's very controlled damage that happens in areas within our skin that absorb laser light and heat up, and the magic is how our body reacts. The damage triggers our wound healing response, and our bodies first work to remove damaged tissues. Then cells in the skin begin making new collagen and elastin. These are both critical elements of healthy skin that our bodies make less and less of as we age. New collagen production can continue for months after treatment, leading to firmer, younger-looking skin. And the process is similar to exercise, where small amounts of muscle damage lead to stronger tissue. It's the same concept with skin, so precise laser damage prompts the skin to rebuild itself stronger than before. But the key is that the damage must be done carefully. We want to damage specific areas in the skin without harming nearby tissues. So the first attempts of using lasers to counter the signs of skin aging was done in the 1980s, but the technology wasn't precise, and this sometimes led to too much damage, which caused scarring and other side effects. But since that time, we've developed the technologies for more accurate targeting and control. This has made the technology safer and more effective, and that brings us onto the laser technologies that we use today. There are two broad types, we've got ablative and non-ablative, and we'll look at how each one works and what they can do for you. So ablative laser treatments are more aggressive, they remove the top layer of skin while also stimulating changes at the deeper layers. The first widely used ablative laser was the CO2 laser. It's powerful so it's got the potential to produce strong results. At first though, it often did too much damage, leading to scarring. But researchers developed new ways of controlling the laser beam so it wouldn't stay in one place for too long. They also figured out that turning the laser on and off rapidly instead of just leaving it on helped too. So today's CO2 lasers are an effective way to reduce fine lines and wrinkles and to tighten the skin. As one study put it, they've been the gold standard in skin rejuvenation technologies. One analysis looked at 259 patients with fine lines and they treated those patients with CO2 lasers. There was an incredible 90% improvement on average. Another common type of ablative laser is the ER laser. It was developed in the 1990s and it uses a different wavelength of light that doesn't go as deep. It causes less damage in the non-targeted tissues and it results in a shorter recovery period, usually about 3 to 8 days, and with a lower risk of complications. ER lasers are excellent for treating fine lines and superficial skin tissues, but they may require multiple treatments to achieve the similar results compared to a CO2 laser. One study found it took at least five passes with an ER laser to achieve the same result compared to two to three passes of a CO2 laser. So what are the pros of ablative laser treatments? Well, the key advantage is that they provide aggressive skin resurfacing for the most dramatic results. They are an effective way for treating more pronounced wrinkles, improve texture, and tighten the skin. They also require usually just one treatment to achieve the desired outcome. But what are the cons? Well, because this treatment is more aggressive, there are also higher risks of adverse effects. Those can include scarring and unwanted changes in the skin. Ablative skin treatments also have a longer recovery time. And in rare cases, skin redness can persist for up to a year after treatment with CO2 lasers. And it's specifically these drawbacks with ablative treatments that led to scientists to look for a new approach. They wanted less aggressive ways of rejuvenating the skin that might also produce good results without the side effects. And that brings us to non-ablative technologies. So how do these compare to the ablative treatments that we've already looked at? Well, one of them that we'll look at is the popular red light treatment. Now, non-ablative treatment means that it doesn't take away the surface layer of the skin. It stays intact. Instead, the lasers penetrate below the surface and heat the tissue to promote changes like increased collagen production. There are many different forms of non-ablative treatment, and each deploys a different technology for a unique profile of effects. Here we'll consider some of the most common. The first is intense pulsed light. Strictly speaking, it's not a laser treatment. Lasers emit primarily one wavelength of light, but in contrast, this treatment uses a broad spectrum of light. It targets freckles, age marks, and small red veins in the skin. 
and it's particularly effective for that last one, which is a common problem in aged skin. The best part is that the downtime is minimal. A patient can often have the procedure done in their lunch break and return to work immediately afterwards. There might be some redness for a few hours or a day, but generally it's really well tolerated. However, multiple sessions are usually required for optimal results, and it's not as effective for deep wrinkles or significant skin laxity. If we want to target skin wrinkles and laxity, radio frequency devices are a good option. These use electrical currents or light waves to heat the layers below the surface of the skin. That stimulates collagen production and results in tighter, smoother skin. These treatments can be delivered through different types of devices, which each offer different depths of penetration. This method provides immediate skin tightening by causing the collagen to contract. It also stimulates new collagen creation with continued improvement over time. It's suitable for all skin types and the discomfort is minimal, making it a popular choice. Radio frequency devices are ideal for targeting skin wrinkles and laxity with minimal discomfort. Another powerful tool in our arsenal is infrared light devices. These devices use a wavelength of light that penetrates the deeper layers of the skin. The mechanism is just like radio frequency devices. It heats the collagen fibers, causing them to contract and stimulates new collagen production. And like radio frequency devices, infrared treatments are particularly effective for treating skin laxity and fine wrinkles. The recovery time is minimal. But these devices are not effective for treating pigmentation or improving the appearance of small blood vessels. They're best for those looking to tighten and improve skin texture. The final option before discussing red light therapy is photodynamic therapy. In this therapy, a chemical is applied to the skin that the light activates. Often, intense pulsed light is used. This process destroys damaged skin cells and promotes new cell growth, making it effective for both acne and photoaging. It's best for those with early signs of photoaging. Now let's have a look at red light therapy. This therapy involves using low-intensity red light to penetrate the skin, stimulating cellular activity. It works by shining specific wavelengths of light, typically between 600 to 650 nanometers, which are absorbed by the skin cells. And unlike traditional laser techniques, it doesn't work by heating up the tissues of the skin. Instead, the light is absorbed by the energy centers of the cell, the mitochondria. It stimulates energy production and enhances several processes related to skin appearance, including collagen production, blood circulation, and healing. That's the theory, but does it really work? Can we get these effects simply by shining red light onto our skin? Well, multiple randomized controlled trials have shown that it might be useful in the treatment of skin acne, which is why the clinical guidelines recommend it for acne treatment. But what about for fine lines and wrinkles? Well, a 2022 meta-analysis suggested that the small trials that we have, they are trending in a positive direction, but the improvements in skin wrinkles are gradual. And personally, I agree with the Cleveland Clinic's review, which states that red light therapy is an emerging treatment that's generally growing in interest, but at this point in time, there's not enough evidence to support most of its uses. I'm waiting for more research to be done before jumping on the red light bandwagon. So what are the pros when it comes to non-ablative technologies that we've looked at? Well, their biggest advantage over ablative treatment is that they're much gentler. This means fewer adverse effects and a much shorter recovery time. And how about the cons? Well, generally speaking, non-ablative techniques don't give us the same results that we can achieve with ablative lasers. And they usually require several treatments to realize their full potential. But what if we had a way to combine the effectiveness of ablative treatments with the low recovery times of non-ablative ones? Well, it turns out we do. Scientists developed a novel approach where the laser treats columns of skin separated by places that are left untreated. This way, some of the tissue is damaged and some of it is left alone. And this is called fractional laser technologies because only a fraction of the surface area is treated. With this approach, there's less total damage and the undamaged skin near the damaged areas speeds up healing and recovery. Overall, this means fewer adverse effects. Compared to traditional ablative lasers, complications from fractional ablative laser resurfacing are far less severe and less frequent. And crucially, fractional lasers seem to be nearly as effective as non-fractional lasers in some cases. And the recovery time is way shorter. Patients can expect a few days instead of a couple of weeks. Fractional technology is also used in some non-ablative lasers, and the idea here is the same, to try and achieve much of the same impact with fewer side effects and a more rapid recovery. So we've covered a lot of ground in this video, so let's summarize. First, we looked at ablative lasers. These vaporize the top layer of the skin and heat the tissues below the surface. This stimulates collagen production and skin regeneration, and they're the most aggressive treatment type. Their pros is that they give us the biggest improvements in areas like wrinkles and skin laxity. They also need just one treatment. 
But on the other hand, they have higher risks of adverse events and long recovery times. Non-ablative technologies, on the other hand, are gentler and don't remove the outer layer of the skin. They use a variety of techniques to promote collagen growth and skin rejuvenation. They can provide meaningful improvements in fine lines, age spots, skin texture, and visible blood vessels. The advantage is a lower risk of adverse events and a much shorter recovery time, but their effects aren't as powerful and they usually require several treatments. Finally, we looked at fractional lasers. These come in both ablative and non-ablative forms, and they work on just a fraction of the skin, limiting the adverse events and recovery time while maintaining a very positive effect. So what's the best approach for you? Well, that will depend on a variety of factors, including the science of skin aging that you're trying to address, your skin type and your willingness to experience longer recovery times and your budget. But this overview should hopefully give you the necessary background information as you enter into conversations with your healthcare providers. But suppose you're wondering this, are there ways to improve the look of your skin that don't require laser treatment? Well, there are plenty that we can do today. For one thing, there are supplements like hyaluronic acid, which moisturize the skin and improve skin wrinkles. And that's why I include it in microvitamin. But there are a lot more methods to improve our skin, so in this next video here, I reveal a science-backed step-by-step system for dialing back the signs of skin aging.